Hey Kingdom, look here! What you've seen right now is probably one of the best tank characters in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I'm talking about this old bear. I explored different multiclass options and make crazy tanky druid. Our starting class will be druid, and while you can pick any race you like, I like to start as wooden half-elf, because we will be able to move a lot more faster. And later we will use creative multiclass option to make this druid very tanky. Still as druid you need to pick two cantrips, it will be shillelay and guidance. And you can definitely use this character as your main character, so go with guild artisan background and bump up your charisma to 14. Basically, we're trying to get all our mental abilities as high as possible. So that's the build. 12 dexterity for basic armor class and also initiative. 12 constitution to be more tanky in normal form. 14 intelligence, 14 charisma and 16 wisdom because wisdom is our main spellcasting ability. So our starting druid is ready and you will find yourself on the beach in the no time. That's where you will already be level 2 and we need to get one more level in druid. So after getting one more level in druid you want to pick your subclass and it will be circle of the moon. Druids got access to all spells so you just need to prepare your spell list before the fight. I like long strider to be able to buff myself and my party with movement speed, fairy fire is useful stuff, healing ward to have bonus action to be able to heal your teammates, ice knife and thunder wave is nice options if you want some spells, in case you need some damaging utility stuff. To push enemies away, basically with thunder wave you can push them off the cliffs and ice knife can slow them down from the distance, so that's pretty useful utility stuff. In case you're stuck in a human form, just cast Shillelay on your weapon and you will be able to do nice attacks even with basic water stuff. But we're not picking Moon Druid to stay in the human form, that's why never forget to cast Long Strider before the fight. It's ritual, so it won't use any spell slots if you're casting outside of the combat and it will add additional movement speed. And now you will be able to use your spell slots for healing Word to heal your teammates if they downed and other spells, but you get wild shape charges. They will recharge on short rest, and you can use them with bonus action as Moon Druid. And the best fight start will be like this: cast Shillelay with bonus action before the fight, so you're basically not wasting your bonus action. And now you can attack with your stick or use magic to gain advantage on attacker rolls. And now with bonus action you can cast your wild shapes. There's a bunch of wild shapes: badger is cool, bear is cool, cat is not cool, it's used for exploration, spider is very good and wolf is extremely powerful too. But try to get used to bear form, because we will be building the tanky druid. You can keep concentration on fatty fire even in bear form, and this means bear can do basic attack with advantage, also he got ability coating roar. And as Moon Druid you can use bonus action in bear form to heal yourself a little bit. Keep in mind it's self heal, so you can't heal teammates, only yourself. And coolest part, you don't even need to worry about your health, because if you die in bear form you will get back to human form with full health, and can use bonus action to get back into bear form again. That's the power of Moon Druid. Being attacked, animal form is broken, the next turn get back to bear form or any other form and get back all your health. And considering all these forms recharge on short rest, they basically almost unlimited. If you're using wolf form, make sure to utilize exposing bite. After hitting an enemy with this attack, the next attack will be critical hit. It's useful for yourself or even for your party members. Also, you can add a lot of movement speed to you and your party, so wolf is nice form too. But let's get back to leveling. So, on level 3 you want to pick one more level in druid, because you will get this nice power spike with additional spells. And on level 4 we get in one more level in druid. To get one additional cantrip, you don't care which cantrip it is. Most importantly, we unlock feet, and it will be tavern brawler with plus one into constitution. Tavern Brawler should add strength to your unarmed attacks. But it looks like we don't have any strength modifier. But don't get fooled by these stats, let me explain. 
So as level 4 druid you will get additional stuff that you can do. Basically you can use good berries at the end of the day or at the start of the day with your spell slots to get some healing stuff. You can have enhanced sleep, it's ritual so no spell slots will be used and you will be able to jump for really large distances, very nice for exploration. Concentration spells like Moonbeam and Hold Person for example and even Spike Growth can be concentrated even in bear and in other forms. Or you can summon flaming sphere that will be your friend and you can concentrate on it too. Having additional body in a fight is not a bad idea. But make sure there is no explosives on the battlefield. Also you will unlock additional animal forms. And basically you can start a fight by casting hold person on an enemy. And then when he is holded you can use your bonus action to get into animal form. The next turn will be critical hit 100% chance on this bro. For example, Deep Roti got basic attack and also charge attack. This charge attack can be aligned on many enemies at the same time and it will be critical hit on enemy who is hold person. Another good form is spider that is not covered, basically you will have ability to cast web as bonus action, that's great, it will block enemies ability to move by a lot and in just few turns you can cover wall area in a lot of web. And as spider you won't have any penalty by moving in the webs, because you are immune to web and enemies are not. And this gives you ability to attack with advantage. And just look at the damage. That's why we need Tyrant Brawler. Damage is pretty good. And even animals who's using dexterity modifier for their attacks like Spider will add strength modifier to their damage and attack rolls. And considering there is a lot of enemies who get around 15 health at this point of the game, we are able to almost one-shot them, but you can ensure this. So you need to go into the druid grove and find a trader. Most of the time in my videos I'm going to Daemon for some cool weapons and armors, but right now we need to go and find this lady, Auntie Etel. So she is selling us insanely powerful stuff. It's elixirs of heal giant strength that will bump our strength to 21. And after leveling up after you bought all potions and lotions from this lady, the stock will be refreshed. So just talk with her again and you can buy basically unlimited amounts of these potions. Now you can drink it from the start of the day and it will raise your strength to 21. It will last for whole day until long rest. And now every animal form will have bonus damage, even the raven. Even the raven will be insanely deadly, just look at this flying bro. Mental stats will stay the same, but you will have this 21 strength on all animals. So even basic raven can just go into one shot squishy targets, while being able to fly at this point of the game, so you can close the distance insanely easy and fast and just destroy enemies. In case you're out of animal form, don't forget about other spells. Spike Growth is very nice for limiting enemy ability to travel through the area, you can just use it as zone control, or for example cast Spike Growth on your enemies with a center around them, cast uh, with bonus action raven form and just fly away so enemies can get to you. And enemies will be forced to do something, most of the time they will try to just walk away for example, while you can get back into caster form and cast more spells on the next turn. But what do you need to cast? Spike Growth lasts 100 turns and enemies will just walk themselves to death. Because don't forget, you can cast only one concentration spell at a time. If you cast Moonbeam for example, there will be no Spike Growth and vice versa. While Moonbeam doesn't look like a great damage spell just to 2d10, in reality it's 4d10 because when you cast Moonbeam and enemy will be damaged, he will be damaged on the next turn again and you can be in a bear form. So enemy will be forced to walk away from the Moonbeam and will provoke opportunity attack from you and he will do a lot more damage. And after getting 5 levels of druid for extra attack, we switch in our class into Barbarian. And that's why you're not seeing this build a lot. When you're raging as Barbarian, you will block yourself from spell casting. So basically after you cast Rage, you will block all concentration spells and you won't be able to keep this concentration. Also Rage uses bonus action, this means we can get into bear form only on next turn. So that's a lot of reasons why this class is not blend well together. And that's why you want to cast Shillelagh before the fight 
to cast Rage on the first turn and then to be able to attack with your quarter stuff. And while it will have a lot of additional damage, actually with a Tavern Brawler and with Potions, your basic attack will have 13 stable damage. So in reality you can go fully unarmed and do nice chunks of damage. And on the next turn you will change your wild shape. And now you can do a lot of funny stuff. For example, you can be in the wolf form and just go and demolish your enemies. Just look at this damage chart. Basically we add in our strength modifier two turns times for 3d6 plus 10 flat damage. Problem of animal forms is really low armor class and you will be hit a lot. That's why druid multiclass builds is so rare. Animal forms scale with druid levels, so you naturally want higher druid levels, while barbarian is feeling like insanely stupid idea. But with just 5 levels in druid and the build I showed you, you will easily get to act 2. And while barbarian really blocking all cool spells with his rage, don't forget, that's another resource. So, you can actually just play like a caster, waste all your spell slots on cool spells, or even use it for heals between the fights. And then when you're out of spell slots, go into animal form and rage style. So it's already kinda 3 in 1 character. But here in Act 2 we will level up a little bit and become insanely powerful tank. Don't forget, first 5 levels should be in Druid, then followed by Barbarian, because you don't want to miss this extra wild shape attack and some cool spells like Call Lightning. And after getting to level 5 of Druid, you want to follow it up by 3 levels in Barbarian and pick Wild Heart Barbarian with Bear Heart. This Bear Heart will change your rage, it will give you additional healing, but most importantly it will give you resistance to all damage types without Psychic. And that's the character you will get on level 8. So you can start a fight by just being normal spellcaster with Skull Lightning and other spells. Skull Lightning can be recasted without using spell slots each turn. So you can easily fight in few battles with just Skull Lightning and kill your teammates when they in need. You don't need to be careful in your spell slots, so you can just upcast hold person and other stuff. And just waste your bonus action on healing ward each turn. If you need, you can use your action just for normal attacks to destroy them. And when you're out of spell slots, go into your bear rage. Now you will be forced to make an attack because you don't have any bonus actions left. And then on the next turn, transform into form. It could be a wolf form, and you not only will be doing pretty nice damage, but also will be a lot more tanky in wolf form. Still, he don't have a lot of health. But with bear rage, this health is basically doubled. And that's more than enough to sustain few hits in Act 2. Also, if you're saving your spell slots, you can end rage manually and continue fighting with your spells. So just keep this strategy in mind, in case you will need it in a fight. And that's how I mostly played this character. Basically, I used all my wild shape charges first, and then I finished the day as spellcaster. And if you're debating right now, should you actually get into this barbarian multiclass? Isn't it just better to level up more druid levels to upgrade your animal forms? Most of the time they upgrade by no more than 10 health. So even on weakest forms, rage will give you more effective health than getting few more levels in druid. And that's because we got resistance to all damage types of course when we are in bear rage. So that's all cool and stuff, but how we will feel in Act 3? And in Act 3 you will be even more powerful, because you will find Cloud Giant Strength potions that you can buy from Cobalt in Circus. And finish leveling with Druid. On level 6 you will unlock cool forms, on level 7 there is a bunch of cool spells and you can use summons right now, Woodland Being and Minor Elemental. Get one more level in Druid to unlock Wild Toast Saber form, but most importantly for additional feet. And it doesn't matter too much which feat you pick, you can go for example with Resilient and go Resilient Constitution, that will give you proficiency in constitution saving throws, that is useful when you are in a human form and using your spellcasting abilities. And then you can finish by getting one more level in Druid to unlock level 5 spells for example, where you will find Conjure Elemental, Pretty Nice Summon, 
But also you can get one more level in Barbarian instead. So getting one more level in Barbarian will give you one additional feat. And this feat can be a really surprise pick that you're not seeing a lot. So I will go with mobile feat right now that will add additional movement speed. You can make your choice, you can basically finish with Druid and get a mobile instead of Res Island. Or you can even get plus two into Wisdom to make your spells more powerful. And this will make you almost broken, but to become really completely broken you need one thing from the act 3 so from the lower city central wall teleport location you want to go into this wall and go inside Tsar palace so after getting inside you will go down and you will find a room with green stuff over there there will be a chest in this room so look pick this chest and there will be the key item for our build helmet of grid most items never work when you're in the druid forms but when you're at half HP, you will have two bonus actions, so you can start a fight by casting a spell, for example, and then use one bonus action to rage and second bonus action to cast your wild shape form. And the best wild shape you're looking for right now is the old bear, of course, because old bear is the most HP form and it got insane power, basic attacks doing up to 30 damage, and you can do two of them. This attack is already pretty devastating. But coolest part is our resistance, of course. So by being resistant to all damage types and almost 80 HP, we get 156 effective HP. Also, all bear got a lot of cool actions like rupture, for example, that can push all enemies. And also you can use bonus action to jump and inflict even more damage to enemies around you when you land. Even basic jump will work and make enemies prone sometime, but this extra crushing jump is a lot more powerful. And when enemies is prone, it's a lot easier to finish them. This build definitely puts Moon Druid to another level in tankiness. I hope you enjoyed it and you will have blast playing it in Baldur's Gate 3. Watch other cool videos on the screen right now and see you in the next videos, guys.